Michelle got in and I were working on, on uh, a, a variant of the own children uh, method. And uh, he had given this paper at the uh, uh, UOPS uh, conference in Cape Town in June. And so uh, thank you, Gina, for uh, giving me this opportunity. Um, <clears throat> the, um, I've got a name for this method. I call it Ouch Mom. <laughs> On children is, is abbreviated, believe it or not, as OUCH, O-W-C-H. It's been around for 50 years. OUCH mom, I don't know if it'll have that long of a run, but uh, we'll see. Now, those of you who are short of time uh, and can only make one of two talks on fertility in the next month or so, well, please uh, uh, leave now and come back on April 5th for Professor Shao's uh, talk, uh, which will not only be more interesting, more substantive, more enlightening, and so on, it also may help us uh, with our negotiations with the Chinese uh, National Bureau of Statistics. So mark your calendars and uh, uh, come back April 5th, please. Now here's my co-author, Michel Garin. Uh, I was giving a talk in uh, uh, on paleo demography, and he came up afterwards, and we got to chatting, and and it became a friendship, a long-term friendship. He doesn't do paleo demography, and I, I don't either. But anyway, and this is our our seminar, our, our workshop that was uh, in 2005 in Paris. You will see some familiar faces there, um, uh, and uh, Michel has uh, he has been a. Uh, uh, a, an advocate for us in Africa. He's helped me a lot. When I did French translation, I send it to him. Usually, uh, he responds within 24 hours. And now that we have Audrey, Audrey Dorian here, and if uh, Michelle doesn't respond in 24 hours, I forward it to <laughs> Audrey. <laughs> and she then uh, picks up on it. Uh, so thank you, Audrey. Um, Objectives and motivation, well, my objective and motivation is I'm trying to promote the need for and the use of the UPM census microdata. And Michelle has cooperated with me on this venture. Uh, he's a, uh, you know, a world-class uh, demographer, and really, I'm an historian. Uh, and so we, we chat about things and so on, and he tries to come up with ideas. And um, he came up with this idea of, uh, uh, using a new uh, variable uh, that's uh, becoming widely available, as we're going to see in, in Africa, of uh, uh, you, uh, applying the own children method to African census microdata, but using the empirical data of the question on uh, maternal mortality. Is your mother alive uh, in the census? to uh, use that empirical data then to um, estimate fertility. With the own children method, you usually use a model life table uh, instead of uh, empirical data. And so uh, our, our data, our census microdata, the method is own children, but it's modified. Instead of using the classic life table approach, you use uh, the maternal orphanhood uh, uh, data uh, uh, to get uh, a, a mortality series. And um, uh, we're, this is particularly good for IPMs because, as you know, we have this wonderful variable called MOMLOC, and uh, MOMLOC matches the children to the co-resident mothers. And this is, this is very, uh, very, very useful for many, many things, including uh, on children. And um, I'm going to focus on South Africa, which is the analysis that I did. But uh, uh, Michelle has also done um, uh, applied this to uh, a number of other countries. And I don't know if I'll have time to go into those. We'll see. Let me just uh, can give you, you know, let you know uh, what's coming here. Uh, the lesson I learned is that Momlock is great. It's better than MatchTab. None of you have ever heard of MatchTab, probably. <laughs> But that was the uh, matching program that was used, that was invented almost 50 years ago to do this own child method. And uh, MomLock is better. 
and it's very easy to explain to you why it's better. Monlock actually takes into account the maternal orphanhood method in matching children with mothers. MatchTab does not. And so MatchTab matches children to mothers, and we know the child is an orphan, that the mother is dead. MatchTab doesn't take that into account. And you might say, why not? Well, the answer is very simple. When they invented MatchTab, there was no maternal orphanhood question on any census. And so why would they incorporate it into the program? And then the final lesson I learned is it's the mortality, stupid. If you can get the mortality right, then the fertility is a piece of cake. <clears throat> As many of you know, my job is to get data. Uh, and so you already have the idea, you know, kind of why I'm talking about this today. We think this would be very helpful for us in Africa to get more data, timely data, and, and so on. Um, uh, I, I use these kinds of things uh, as uh, part of my pitch uh, to demonstrate the power of census microdata. I mean, many countries are very shy saying, oh, my data are so bad. You know, I can't, I can't let anyone see them. You know, they're so bad. And so I try to persuade them that actually your data are pretty good. Uh, and, and, and they're useful. Uh, and if you just let people use them, you will be amazed of what happens in the use of your data. And of course, IPMS adds a lot of value to the microdata because most of the statistical agencies think that, okay, I give you my data and then you broadcast it around the planet. And I have to explain to them, no, 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 no. We've got a team of people who work around the clock to integrate these data and, and the metadata in ways that, that are actually pretty clever and are very helpful to researchers. And so you're going to get a lot of use by entrusting your microdata uh, to the Minnesota Population Center. And so over the years, I published a number of papers, sometimes with uh, uh, Steve uh, uh, joins me on these things, or uh, uh, let's see, uh, let's see, yes, this is Steve is on there, Matt is on this one, Albert Esteve from Barcelona, and so on. And each one kind of focuses on some theme that I think might be helpful in liberating the microdata. And so for a while there, it was the revolution, the microdata revolution. And then it became confidentiality, because I found out that, oh my goodness, you know, they're all concerned about confidentiality, so we, can, we have to deal with that. And then uh, this assortative mating thing, uh, here I was using spouse lock uh, to match the spouses so that you can do this analysis of husbands and wives, co-resident <coughs> partners, and uh, learn things from them. And no statistical agency in the world does this kind of analysis, very few of them. And then recently, I've been working on something called coherence, uh, where we look at, uh, and, and this paper is just coming out in Chinese uh, this week, uh, on uh, uh, primary schooling attainment, uh, looking at it by birth cohorts and successive censuses. And so if it lines up, if the proportion completing primary school in 1940 in the Chinese census of 1990, they're 50 years old, okay, 10 years later, that's, that proportion should be very similar. And so you can do a statistical analysis of this, and lo and behold, some censuses look brilliant, and others not so good. But uh, the Chinese looked fantastic after you did a little, we had to change the definitions just a little bit, but it was, it was legal. Uh, you know, we didn't, uh, there's no fraud in this. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, when I first ran the table and I showed it to Steve, and I said, Steve, this is embarrassing. You were like, I can't, you know, I, I will show this to you, but I can't show it to anybody else. And he says, well, Bob, uh, think about the definitions. And so, all right, and so I go and I look at the <coughs> definitions and I realize, oh, yes. If we look at beyond primary, what happens? It locked in. What was happening was that the data are not, they don't carefully distinguish between those who completed primary versus those who just began primary. 
And so if you go to the beyond primary, that is the proportion of uh, people born in 1940 who not only completed primary, but entered another grade beyond primary, then suddenly the 1982 microdata, the 1990 microdata, the 2000 microdata, and the 2010 table that I was able to get off the website all locked in beautifully. And so I, when I was in uh, Beijing, I showed this to the National Bureau of Statistics and explained that I wanted to publish this in Chinese. And they said, well, yes, we know several good journals that, where you might publish this. That we, you know, they appreciate uh, a bit of praise every once in a while. And so that gets us up to coherence. Now, why am I doing this on, child, on children uh, maternal mortality thing? Well, this, once again, it's the power of IPMs. You know, of bringing these data together in a way that ordinary mortals can use them. You don't, you don't have to be uh, a super uh, a hero uh, uh, to use these data. And what helped was this little document published in March 2008. Uh, Mr. Ben Chirigera and I uh, of Uganda, he was Ugandan statistician, and um, uh, he advocated the, uh, this question uh, on orphanhood. He advocated that this be included in African censuses for the 2010 round. And so that for African countries, for censuses in African countries, a core question, orphanhood would be a core question. And this question can be used for many other things other than um, uh, own children uh, fertility estimation. Uh, <clears throat> And here we see in the 2011 census of South Africa uh, an example of the orphanhood question. Is your mother alive? Is your own biological mother still alive? Very important, this question about biology, right? We're, we're trying to get the biological mother. Same thing with the father. Well, we're not using the father data today, but you can also use that as well for uh, applications. Now notice here that the South African census also has a question on who in this household is your biological mother? And you're supposed to, from the, from the household list, then the answer is the number of the person in the household who is your mother. This is the mother's person number, and it's similar to our mom lock. And Laura and Matt have been uh, you know, looking carefully at these uh, mother person numbers because more and more censuses are having them uh, to compare with uh, mom lock. <coughs> And so for the 2010 round of African censuses, uh, the data that we need to do on children is, uh, is frequently available. Now, Egypt 2006, no. They didn't even ask a question on children ever born. The Nigerian uh, uh, sample that we use, the population uh, and household sample, also doesn't have the children ever born question. And then Ghana 2010, they did not ask the question on maternal orphanhood, so we can't do uh, Ghana. But most of the others, it's there. <coughs> now, let me uh, just w walk you through an application of this method to the data for South Africa, all right? And um, the, the gold standard in analyzing fertility in South Africa is this paper by Tom Moultrie at the University of Cape Town and Ian Timaeus at London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, published in Population Studies in 2003. Now, they used the 1996 census data. They, didn't, uh, they did not use the own children method. They are specialists on South Africa. And so they went into great detail in terms of uh, manipulating the data to get the finest uh, uh, data that they could possibly get. Uh, the weighting of the sample is uh, it's weighted to compensate for undercount. So is the IPM sample, by the way. Uh, and in fact, I think our weights are the same as their weights, although I've not actually asked uh, Tom to confirm that. Um, they also applied the El Badri corrections for childlessness to the data. You know, uh, this is one of the problems with uh, children ever born, the answer to children ever born, is sometimes you find a blank when it should be a zero. Right? And so 
women who have not had children, sometimes the question is left blank. And so the Al-Badri method uh, corrects for this. Um, and um, uh, Moultrie and Tamea supplied that uh, to the data. Uh, and then they looked at the 1998 uh, Demographic and Health Survey, and from that they got, uh, they decided that um, the children ever born question in the census includes a small fraction of stillbirths. And so they used the proportion of fraction of still, stillbirths in the DHS to adjust the children ever born uh, series. And they applied two methods uh, to the data. One was they used the birth last year question. Uh, and the other is they used reverse, uh, the reverse survival method, which is based on the age structure of the population and life tables. They did not use on children. And I'm going to be comparing their results with the reverse survival method. Now, reverse survival method, as you see, it does not use the children ever born. All, it, all they're applying there is just the age structure. They're trying to rejuvenate the population by casting backward and adding in the people who died. Babies who are less than one year old, the one year olds, the two year olds, three, four, five, and they cast back for 15 years. And here are the results. You see that in 1998, uh, the total fertility rate is slightly below three. In uh, 1996, which is our key date, because we're not gonna use the DHS, they got that from the DHS, uh, the total fertility rate is about uh, three. Uh, a little over three, about 3.3. .3. And then you see the uh, the, the, the pattern of the descent of fertility, going back from 1981, when it was about 4.5, total fertility rate was about 4.5, uh, and sort of having a precipitous drop there in the uh, mid to late 80s, a leveling off, and then apparently a, a drop uh, in, after 1996. Now, there are others who have made estimates, uh, Sabanda and Zuberi, and uh, you know, I'm not going to go into these, but just to give you an idea of the nature of the debate about what were the levels of fertility in South Africa and uh, what was the pattern of fertility decline and so on. And uh, you see there that, well, uh, there, there is agreement about uh, the decline in fertility, uh, but the timing of the decline and the pace of decline in various uh, five-year periods is a little bit different depending upon uh, which method is used and um, uh, what, uh, what data they're using, and whether they adjust using uh, demographic and health surveys and so on. OK, folks, get ready now. Uh, buckle your seat belts. We're going to look at Alchmam. We're going to look at Alchmam, that is the own children method, with the maternal orphanhood as the mortality input. We're going to look at it in three different censuses. 1996, 2001, and 2011. So here's the first one. It, um, uh, up to about 1985, uh, from 1985 to 1996, it's within the ballpark established by these other estimates, right? But then something happens uh, in the mid-80s, back to 1981, uh, Ouchmam is saying the fertility was a little bit higher than anybody uh, had uh, estimated before. Now, uh, 2001 is in the ballpark, uh, and it suggests that uh, after 1996, fertility declined to Kennedy for a few years, and then it kind of tapered off. And now, and, and notice too, that the 2001 data match up with the 1996 very well. It's pretty amazing, actually. The coherence between those two data sets is, is actually kind of amazing. Now I'm going to add 2011. 2011 data, uh, we cannot go back before 1996 with the 2011 data. Because in the 2011 census, they do not ask the question beyond age 
49. Ideally, if they ask it to age 64, then we can backcast our method for uh, a longer period. Um, now, once again, the pattern it looks pretty good. You know, it's in the ballpark. It's maybe somewhat discouraging, disconcerting because it shows that fertility is rising uh, in uh, between 2005 and 2011, and Stats SA says it's falling. And their estimate, based on children born last year, is, is, is I would say, significantly less than what the Ouchmom gives you. <clears throat> and so, Ouchmom is in the ballpark. When you get back into the early 80s, it's higher than most estimates. And what this is suggesting is, what the percent maternal orphan suggests, is that the life expectancy may have been less than what Stats SA uh, was uh, 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 calculating uh, for the early 80s. Because this, uh, the level of fertility, you know, you, if, if, the more, if you raise the mortality level, uh, this then will inflate your fertility rates and then push them up as well, right? And if you l reduce the mortality level, well, this will reduce the fertility level, right? And so, um, uh, but otherwise, it looks pretty good. Now, I'm adding here another published uh, data set uh, uh, that came out uh, uh, recently. Actually, as I was putting this together, I, I said, well, you know, maybe I should check and see who's citing Moultrie and Timaeus and, and, and track these people down. Well, I only found one study, Paolo Mulaney's uh, study, in which he used the really method. Uh, and um, mm, his pattern doesn't really match up with anybody else's. And the fertility estimate for 2011 is, is, is um, uh, an outlier. Now, uh, before moving on, what about ouch, without ouch mom? Well, I'm a proficient user of DOS. You may not, some of you may not know what DOS is. It's, it's an operating system that existed before Windows. And there are programs that were written in the olden days that do not run under Windows. And that's the problem with ouch is that it did not make the transition to the Windows era. And in fact, they lost the DOS source code. And it's such a wonderful package. It's a shame that it didn't make it, because it's, it is very good. Uh, but I can use DOS, and so I went back and I did a conventional on children method estimation. And um, I'm going to put it on the screen for you in just a moment. There you see it, OK? It's that blue line that lies between Timaeus and Moultrie and uh, Ouch Mom for 1996. Now, <clears throat> Ouch, I used, I used the life expectancies published by Stats SA. And so that's the reason that it falls in closely with Timaeus, because they too, Timaeus and Moultrie, uh, Moultrie and Timaeus also used Stats SA life expectancy. Uh, but I, I had the program, the way the program works is it works only with model life tables. And so whereas you can give it a level, you must use the Princeton mo model life tables in order to get the shape of the mortality distribution, <coughs> right? And so I tried them all. I tried north, south, east, and west, you know, and uh, uh, found out that south seems to work best. You know, at least it comes closest to Moultrie and Timaeus. And so this is based on south. And the mortality is actually adjusted every year to match the level of Stats SA. And so there you see it. With Ouch, it comes pretty close to both Ouch Mom and also Moultrie and Timaeus. Um, so, um, uh, you know, that, that's, that's promising. 
Uh, because uh, now I, one other point about this simulation, I used Momlock instead of their match tab. Their match tab takes a ton of time to execute, to figure out all of these matches between the mothers and the children, right? Whereas Momlock, we have it, it's instant, it's ready, right? And so I used the Momlock to match the children to the mothers and then create this table of age of the child by age of the mother. And the, the program is designed to allow you to input that table, not use MatchTab, and then do your own estimation. And so that way, I was able to minimize uh, any subtle differences that might be due to you know, the matching process and so on. Now, I spent way too much time on this, uh, but, you know, Steve is paying and he doesn't really uh, seem, to, <laughs> seem to care too much. So, you know, I, I took it to its, uh, you know, uh, to an extreme uh, because I, I really wanted to see, you know, how does mom like stack up against match tab? And so I ran match tab and I actually did a statistical analysis of match tab versus mom lock. And what I found, of course, is number one, Match tab does not take into account the fact that the child says the mother is dead. And so match tab matches children to mothers when we know the child is dead. Otherwise, it's pretty much like mom lock. It, it comes very close. Um, does match tab have a relationship to help? To, yeah, that, and, that's... And does it step mom in there in the relationship? Or is it only relationship to head? Um, uh, uh, Mom lock, we take into account stepmom. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, you know, Matt and Laura can tell you the details about that. <laughs> you know, I don't really have it in my head, but I'm, it's brilliant, okay? Whereas Match Tab, the old DOS program, no. It does, it does a very simple thing. It was developed in Asia where household structure is fairly simple. And so, uh, and where they don't have this maternal orphanage question. And so, basically, it's just looking at age, relationship to head, and um, maybe marital status. I can't remember the details now. But it, it, they really, it, it works very well on Asian populations. Not so well for Africa. <clears throat> so, um, in looking at these, um, um, uh, the, uh, it, it seems to me that the, the differences between these, the results, are primarily due to mortality, the mortality estimations. And um, so which do you choose amongst them? Yes, uh, Erin. What does um, South Africa use for its mortality estimation? Well, you know, I did not go into that. <coughs> I am, I very likely they use both census and DHSs. Um, but I didn't really, uh, you know, peruse this uh, uh, where where they're getting their estimates. They're, but they're probably using both census and DHSs to uh, come up with these annual estimates. Um, <clears throat> they're not using maternal orphanhood, though. I'm pretty sure of that. Yeah. No, it's just you know, it might be. If yeah. you wanted to do more with that, that might be kind of an obvious. Sure. Question. It's like, you know, yes. if the mortality stupid is the punchline, then the question is like, well, <laughs> what's yes. the mortality yes. that South Africa is using? Yes. We know what it is mm -hmm. in Auschwitz. You know, yeah. It's just a possible to, to pour further of your efforts into something, Bob, and pursue that further. Yes. Well, uh, as I said, you know, I did the South Africa analysis, and so. Um, uh, and uh, Mich uh, Michelle was on vacation the last couple of weeks, and so uh, you know by the time he got around to looking at this, uh, you know he really didn't give much input other than say, "Well, yeah, it looks great. Go ahead and present it." You know, it's okay to leave my name on it. Yeah. Well, we're still there. Talk about the Alchmom mortality estimation again. You have the whether your mother's alive or not. Right. You know the age of the child, so you know that she's died and you have a six-year-old child in the last six years, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Are you producing then a, a, a model from that that you use uh, with the own child method because you need to come up with some estimate for infant child mortality? Yes. Uh, Michelle has reduced this to a single Excel workbook. And I'm going to show it to you in just a moment. 
And the real power of Ouchmom, it works in Windows. It works in a single workbook, Excel workbook. <coughs> and he's put it together so that three of the tabulations that you can use using the IPMS online data analysis tool, three of the four tables needed to produce these results come from the online data analysis thing. So let me just step backward for a moment then. Uh, you know, maybe you've already heard enough about the rationale of the own, child, own children methods, but um, uh, we're using the, uh, we're, we're trying to reconstruct I only showed you the total fertility rate, but underneath the total fertility rate is the age-specific fertility rates from which we derive the total fertility rates. We're trying to uh, produce a table of births by women of age and period. We're backward projecting the person's year of years lived by women. We're backward projecting births from the survivors. And then from that, we calculate the age-specific and the total age-specific fertility rates and total fertility rates for 10 or 15 years before the census. Uh, the framework, we have women, some have births, some die, uh, some don't have births, then those who have births, are the children living with the mother? Are they living elsewhere? Are they, have they died? Um, as I've already said, the advantage of OuchMom is you only use information available in the census microdata. You match the mothers to co-resident children using MomLock. Uh, and then you backward project the children ever born directly using a spreadsheet. Um, and I have that spreadsheet coming up in a minute. I thought it, it, keep, it's, it must be here soon. As I said, the data needed, three of the tables can be computed by the IPMS tabulator. The fourth could be computed by the IPMS tabulator if we were to add variables to the page that included, let's say, all the variables for the mothers, age of the mother, marital stages of the mother, and so on. I mean, it would be good to have all of them, but if you're only going to have one, please give me the age of the mother, you know, so that's in the online data analysis. Now, if Albert Esteve was giving this, he would say, oh, no, please give us the age of the spouses and the educational attainment level of the spouses and the place of birth of the spouses, and, well, that would be Albert's. Uh, thing. Um, <clears throat> and, but yes, three of, you know, and so you can, you can do three-fourths of this analysis just using the online data anal uh, tab uh, uh, analysis tool and dropping those tables into a spreadsheet that I'm going to show you very soon now. Yes! Here it is. As I mentioned earlier, one of the great problems with the, uh, the East-West Center uh, population uh, program is it only runs on DOS. And so Michelle has come up with a way of doing own, ch own children uh, fertility uh, in just four uh, simple tables. Uh, and you, know, you can plug your data. The idea is that even students can plug their data into this and be able to get the results and, and analyze them and so on. Yes? robust enough and with enough cases that you could look at differentials? I mean, the... the Beautiful. Oh, Beautiful. Yes, this is exactly where we're going. Because I'm telling him, look, we have microdata. You can analyze these in ways that no one has ever thought of before, precisely with differentials. And, and the data sets are huge, you know. Uh, you have a million mothers, you know, and two million children, and all this sort of thing. And so, yes, in fact, that's where I'm going with this. And I, uh, uh, Michel is a very cautious demographer, and he doesn't want to take it too far. He likes perfection, you know, and he's saying, oh, Bob, you do that. It, you know, students will just go crazy, and they will do crazy things, and, and it'll be bad. And uh, I say, no, 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 no. We, all we want is good enough, you know. And, and, <coughs> and, and, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't have to be perfect. And so what do we need for this? Table number one, is there a pointer here? I, I, you know, I don't know how to use the pointer, I guess. Let's see. Oh, there it is. Yes, table one. We need the number of women age 12 to 64 by single year of age. That's the first table. Easy, right? Second table, mean number of children ever born to women age 12 to 64 by single year of age. Once again, very easy to do, online data analysis tool. Then we need the proportion of children whose mother had died uh, 
uh, fortunate children aged 0 to 49 whose mother had died, and that too we can get from an online tabulator. The one that we cannot get is a cross-tabulation of own children by age of mother and age of child. But of course, we can easily get that with an extract, right? And so, um, now I was going to set this up before I started, and I forgot to set it up. But let me just show you this uh, Excel spreadsheet, right, quickly. Do I have a moment? Uh, yes, and so here's the Excel spreadsheet, and the items that are in, the cells that are in yellow are the ones that you have to fill in. Uh, is, uh, is, is some of you know, I, I'm not, I'm only used to my, well, apparently I, I can't make this move, but anyway. Uh, you can see here, here's our maternal orphanhood, the mean number of children who were born, and, and, and so on. And then if I could get it to page down, you would see the, the uh, age of the mother by age of child. But... Oh, oh, okay. And so then we do the calculations, first with the women. Um, uh, we're running a little short of time, so I'll just kind of whip through this uh, quickly. You can actually go into the spreadsheet, though, and you can see his formulas and so on and uh, uh, critique them uh, to see how this is done. <coughs> Uh, age specific f uh, rates and so on. Uh, now, and so that's the uh, South Africa example. He also did a Kenya example. Actually, six countries, and uh, I don't know. It's one o'clock. Maybe I should stop now. Well, you could go. Uh, we have to one fifteen, but we. Okay. All right. Way. And so uh, uh, he did them all. Um, as I said, uh, you know, Michelle was kind of a perfectionist, and so he, he didn't think any of these were very good. <laughs> I thought, I thought they were great. <laughs> um, um, he, uh, he did a mistake, though, and he has to redo the analysis. And this I've already uh, communicated to Laura. While the documentation on mom lock and stepmom and so on is absolutely gorgeous, explicit, descriptive, succinct, right on target, Michelle did not understand that you had to filter by stepmom equals zero to get the biological mothers. And so when he did the age of child by age of mother, he included children who were stepchildren, whose mother uh, you know, uh, was uh, a stepmom. And so he has to go back and redo this analysis. Uh, and, and he complained to me. He says, Bob, you, this mom lock thing is not nearly as good as what you told me. You, know? I mean, you promised that this would be very good. And it was better than MatchTap. And, and it isn't. And so I had to figure out what the problem was. And I very quickly realized, oh my goodness, yes, he's not filtering by stepmom. But by then he, had, uh, uh, he still hasn't got back to uh, redoing those. And uh, so you look at the Kenya data, you look at the age structure, and it's, it's pretty terrible. There's a lot of age heaping there, right? Uh, this is the age structure of women, and you see those peaks and valleys. The peaks are zero age, uh, ages at ends in zero and fives. And you see there's a lot of peakedness to that. And so obviously when you try to do this, this uh, reconstruct these uh, total fertility rates, when you've got that kind of age heaping, you're, it's not going to work nearly as well. Now South Africa, of course, does not have the age heaping. South African age, ages are very good uh, because the educational <coughs> levels are, are higher. And um, children ever born, the, um, uh, the graph for that is pretty good. You see a few peaks and valleys here and there, and that, team, that is also a reflection of the age heaping and the uh, uh, age structure. Women who tend to have ages ending in zero also tend to have more children because they have less education. And then the maternal orphanhood, it looks pretty good, except there, too, there are some peaks. Uh, that are a little disconcerting, but it's not too bad. And then the distribution of age of children by age of mother, well, uh, as I said, this uh, does include uh, stepmom equals all, and so some of that uh, might be reduced if you get rid of the stepmothers, uh, uh, some of the peakedness to that. Um, quickly turning to the results, 
Um, Michelle likes bar charts. Here we're comparing the 2009 census with the 2000 and I think it's eight demographic and health survey. Is that right, uh, Miriam? 2008. Now you don't remember the year. It was, anyway, it's very close. It's not the same year, but it's very close. And the pattern is disconcertingly different. Um, some of this may be due to problems in the DHS, and some of it may be due to problems in the census. Uh, you look at the age pattern of fertility. Um, uh, the census, uh, you know, he, uh, uh, Michel looks at this uh, and, and uh, he sees uh, problems with the age distribution, be smoother and shouldn't be so kind of, uh, what is that, convex. Uh, you look at the fertility trends, uh, comparing um, uh, DHS and, and uh, census, well, you know, it doesn't look too bad in the recent years, but uh, when you get back 10 to 15 years, it's, uh, it's kind of out of line. Sources of bias, well, accurate age of mother, accurate age of children, accurate matching of children with mother, uh, and then this problem of a distribution of, uh, of children living with mother, obviously, if the child, if the if the um, uh, the age of children whose mothers have died is probably somewhat different from those whose mother, where there's migration or where the uh, the two are co-resident. And then he did some experiments with uh, uh, women's age misreporting to see how that might impact the uh, age-specific fertility rates. And ah, yes, this is the mean age of children from a DHS 2008. The mean age of, uh, by age of mother, uh, about whether the child is at home, outside, out of the home, or uh, has died. And you see there that, uh, no, the child has died. The mother is, uh, uh, the mother's age is on, oops, oops. Uh, the mother's age is, is here on the, uh, on the horizontal axis. And so you see that um, uh, those who are elsewhere, they tend to be older than those who have died, and those who have died tend to be older than those who were at home. And so that's going to introduce a bit of bias uh, as well. And uh, then he produces his distribution of births by year before the survey, uh, looking at uh, the DHS, where you have uh, complete birth histories and you can actually do this kind of analysis. And there too, he finds a similar pattern of, uh, you know, uh, there is uh, uh, a bias by whether the child is alive, dead, or living elsewhere. And so uh, he concludes from the Kenya case study that the level of fertility is acceptable for the last uh, for the past five, six years. Uh, the pattern is, seems to be biased for older women. Uh, the trends are strongly biased for early periods. Uh, and um, uh, a straightforward reverse survival probably gives you better results the further back in time you go than with the own child thing. And he looks at uh, Kenya 1989, and there the results are a little bit better. Um, there, there's more, co more coherence there, not quite so good with Kenya 1999. And uh, if you put those three censuses together then, uh, you can kind of use the, if he is suggesting you can use the, the on-child fertility, if you take just the five years previous to the census and piece those together for these censuses that are uh, separated in time by uh, 10 years. And uh, then finally, the limitations of the own children method. Well, uh, obviously, and this is true for both, whether you're using uh, mom or not, uh, the quality of the data, violation of the hypotheses, the, uh, Steve might call this the whopper, uh, the effect of the interrelation between these uh, various phenomena there of mortality, migration, and so on. Um, and then if you compare the, the on-child uh, with uh, reverse survival, well, on-child obviously is more difficult to apply. It's more subject to bias. But it does provide an age pattern and series of uh, age pattern of, of fertility uh, and a series of total fertility rates. 
And um, he argues that we have a need for triangulation here. We need to use all the sources we have and compare them and see what we can come up with. But what has been happening, of course, is that the, the census is, is going underused, underutilized. <clears throat> so reconstructing fertility levels and trends from census data is a challenge, but the microdata are better than the aggregated uh, tables because you can do much more analysis in terms of the level of fertility, the age pattern, and so on. Uh, we think this attempt is worthwhile uh, because you can uh, examine some of these uh, uh, biases. Ipham's Momlock, I, I'm sure everyone in the room agrees that Ipham's Momlock is better than East-West Pop when it comes to matching uh, kids. Both uh, own children and uh, own children uh, with the uh, uh, maternal orphanhood are sensitive to data quality and mortality inputs, but so is reverse survival. And so the lesson I learned from this is Momlock is great, Ouch Mom is worth considering, and, but it, it's really, you have to get the mortality straight in order to, uh, uh, to come up with uh, 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 convincing results. So thank you very much. Yes, Miriam. So I think that um, if you want to carry this further, a couple ways you could do it um, would be to emphasize um, or try out um, and show the usefulness for looking at um, differentials, like by mm -hmm. region and by yes. characteristics of individuals. Mm -hmm. um, it's probably going to be hard to... DHS is probably going to, be, because of the way they collect the data, that's probably going to be the gold standard if, mm -hmm. there, is, if there is a DHS. Mm -hmm. um, but the DHS samples tend to be small. Yep. And so you can't usually do yes. um, you know, regional or you know, wealth quintile or education level or whatever yes. um, differentials. So I think one way to carry this forward would be to do some of that and argue that you know, for our... Um, maybe we're going to go to other sources when we have them um, that are maybe more reliable for overall levels and trends, but this can illuminate mm -hmm. other things that DHS can't. And then there are a lot of gaps in terms of what, you know, what countries and what years have the DHS that yes. isn't mm -hmm. um, a DHS. Yeah. Um, and there is census data that we have. So yeah. that would be another selling point of saying like, well, we know like, you know, it's sort of within this confidence interval or, or this time period is the most reliable. So we're going to look at it sort of from those perspectives mm -hmm. for the places where there isn't a mix or a DHS. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree with you. Yes, thank you. Yes. Do you want to respond to uh, well, no, I, I agree, absolutely. This, is the, this could be the growth industry for the use of, uh, of Ouchmom, uh, but uh, Michelle is a bit resistant to it because it's, you know, it, you're, you're complicating the assumptions about mortality and so on uh, because of the, um, the mothers in the quintile that you're trying to estimate uh, the children who are not in the households of the mothers who have died from that quintile, you know, the hypotheses just kind of accelerate and so on. But I agree with you. I, th I think we should be bold and try to look at these, uh, you know, disaggregate this, not just look at the national level. Yes. So I think, I mean, I, this, is, this is fascinating. I don't work on the mortality front, but like I, I work a lot with model migration schedules, right? So think mm -hmm. about age patterns. And so one of the things that comes to mind is that I think one of the strong selling points is moving away from the, the model schedules and choices. Yes, and yes. And you're showing on the slides that you have these problems with like the age pattern completed fertility or uh, the age pattern mortality. So I wonder if there's an intermediary world there. I, I'm sorry? There's an intermediary world yeah. there. And so I'm wondering, I'm wondering is if you could take the empirical age patterns that you come up with in the data, which are going to have all these mm -hmm. fluctuations, and develop some algorithm uh, for smoothing them, essentially. Uh -huh. And so you know, people who do this with net migration age patterns, right. they develop these families similar to the yes. mm -hmm. life tables, but they're based on sort of from the ground up, from the empirical, yeah. level, so are model life tables, but I've yes. seen your stuff. Yes. And I'm kind of thinking maybe that might be a nice yeah. midway so that mm -hmm. you can convince people that you're aware and factoring in or trying to mm -hmm. take out yes. all that variability mm -hmm. and building it from the empirical perspective. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Yeah, I, I think that too, you know, looking at the uh, proportions orphaned and so on, and, you know, one can imagine how you might uh, develop a multidimensional model of this and figure out how to make some finer adjustments. As an historian, I'm a little resistant to smoothing because it gets rid of history, you know. I mean, things happen at a specific moment in time. And uh, so, you know, sometimes when you're smoothing, you're getting rid of this fact that, okay, there was a famine, there was a revolution, there was, you know, whatever, you know, and so on. But, uh, you know, you're, you're right that, uh, that that could help you get a more stable, a more uh, uh, perhaps robust estimate of... Uh, perhaps you smooth within periods, too. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, I think it's something kind of essential. Um, I, I see how the orphanage question is really good because you're reverse surviving mothers. And so you know how many were alive before the census? Presumably uh -huh. they were alive when their kids were born, right? Yes. Uh, but uh, you also, you have living children. You're trying to reverse survive number of births in years before the census. So you need some mortality estimate of infant child mortality. Mm -hmm. Where's that coming from? Mm, it's coming from... I mean, are you using the maternal uh, to derive it, some type of schedule and then make some type of model fit? It's coming from the children ever born versus children survival. Oh, you have children... I'm sorry. That's I, I'm I'm sorry. I, yes, I left that. Yes, born, yes. Right? I, you have I, direct I, estimate of infant yes. mortality there. Yes, yeah, at, okay. at an aggregate level, not a specific one. I'm sorry, I, I left that out of... Well, the real problem then with these differentials then that you have differential mortality, you have to estimate to, to do differential on the child. Yes, yes. And that, that could get pretty tricky, it's particularly where the mother is you dead. Can do it, yeah. Yeah. Yes. I know you were emphasizing the, the introduction of the orphanage questions, but it was really great that you had the ever child ever, or the number of children ever born, because that also um, helps you account for all the fostering that happens in a lot of these countries. Yes. Um, as well as the infant mortality. Um, mm -hmm. and so I might emphasize that more as you're as you mm -hmm. in future drafts of the paper. Yes. And I'm also, I, I, I mean, maybe I, I missed it, but I really thought that that um, increased um, fertility estimates in the early 80s and in the South African case is really interesting. Yes. And so do you think that's entirely attributable to selective mortality and picking up <clears throat> your fertility estimates from the surviving mothers and children, so because you're missing all the, I, I mean, I'm just, I, I really don't yeah. know why it's so high in the 80s. Yes. Well, uh, obviously this needs more research, you know, uh, uh, Michelle had not seen this, and so, you know, first is he's going to question me, you know, did I do it right? The first <laughs> thing he will do is he will redo this and see, did I get it right? And then... Um, uh, there are there are other data from that era, and so we might be able to check. You know, there there was a uh, health survey that was done in the mid 1980s that uh, might be used, uh, and uh, to to have a closer look at that. I mean, it it may evaporate under further research, uh, but um, yeah. Uh, and and there may it, there, it's possible that it's due to some sort of bias, as you said, in terms of uh, survival of the mothers and so on. Although, yeah, I mean, if you see the greatest um, increase in um, mortality among primary working parents, um, I think yeah, it's, it, the biggest peak is between what, like '94 and 2000 in this context. So that would so if you're using the '96 data to Backcast, then that's where you're really seeing the selectivity take hold. But I mean, would that, is that consistent with other people's understanding of mortality patterns, HIV mortality patterns? Uh huh. Uh, yeah, I'm out of my depth here. Uh, I tried to get Michelle to uh, Skype in, uh, but unfortunately, he had a uh, uh, a meeting and couldn't join us. I'm sure he would be have been delighted to address that uh, question. Well, I'm afraid we're out of time. So, thank you very much. Hey, thank you, Steve. And, uh, you know, I, I want to say a, a great thanks to the YIPMS team who were doing all this work of getting these together and the metadata and so on. I mean, it's just absolutely fantastic. 
I get to do most of the traveling. I get all of the praise and so on. I try to tell them, no, no, I don't do the work. I just get the data. These guys back in Minnesota do the work. But uh, it's, it's just really been a, a, a brilliant ex experience for me to uh, be part of this project. And I should also tell you that I am uh, retiring in about a year or so. I am moving to Florida in six months. Uh, I, you know, I, my wife is kind of like she'd like to leave tomorrow, but uh, we're, we're going to stick around for uh, the summer, uh, which is pretty nice up here. And then also there's a meeting in the fall of the Asia and Pacific and American census chiefs that the U.S. Census Bureau is going to host right here in Minneapolis. And so a lot of our census partners will be coming for that, and so I want to be here when that happens. So, I'll, but you better be. <laughs>